The United States blamed by some Palestinians for its ongoing support, as it is seen, of Israel in this uh, conflict, in this Middle Eastern conflict. However, while some Palestinians were taking to the streets in apparent celebration, one youth was quoted as saying, as he received a sweet, sweets handed around in celebration, this is a sweet from Osama bin Laden, he said. Bin Laden the purported mastermind of the 9-11 terrorist attacks, in which the fundamentals of Islam played a significant role, is dead, killed by US special forces. And yeah, damn straight Islam was a significant factor. I mean, is anyone here actually willing to stand forward and defend the idea that the religion of Islam was not a significant factor in any of this? That the last words on the hijacker's lips were not the Islamic battle cry, Alu Akbar? Anyway, I think this is arguably the best way it could have played out. I mean, it's hard to claim that you died as a martyr for any cause if you spent the best part of the last decade hiding in caves or imprisoned within your own compound, all but cut off from the outside world. I mean, let's be real, crazy hermits hide in secrecy for years, and it's difficult to see how this can be spun as some valiant hero's death. Indeed, it very much reminds me of Saddam Hussein, who was also caught hiding, albeit in a hole in the ground. So will this change the state of play much? Yeah, I think so. It sets the precedent that if you wish to rouse the sleeping giant, you'd best be ready to deal with the consequences that's likely to entail. And Bin Laden getting killed by US special forces puts that precedent on a 50-foot-tall, highlighted neon glowing banner. And while the outcome of the 9-11 attacks doubtless exceeded all of Al-Qaeda's expectations, I have to wonder if in those many years of hiding, in his self-imposed imprisonment, if he had doubts whether his attempts to gain the attention of America had been counterproductive to his goals. But who knows what went through his mind. It wouldn't surprise me if he drew solace from his religion. However, in practical terms, the reaction that followed 9-11 has not been productive to any goals that he might have been trying to achieve. I mean, 9-11 was the crowning jewel in Al-Qaeda's achievements. After that, people took them seriously, and the crackdown began. And a few years later, they were still capable of making the odd bomb, such as the London and Madrid bombings. But since then, the operational efficiency of the organization in the West has been a farce, limited to what can only be described as amateurish and half-assed attacks. I mean, just to put it all into perspective, the Columbine attacks were two completely untrained delinquent teenagers. But they were pros compared to the typical terrorist attack of late, which, if they were doing well, managed to severely burn or kill themselves only. But arguably, Bin Laden's legacy will have been to have awakened a complacent West to an ideology that will motivate people, either in part or totally, to blowing up planes buildings, burning down embassies, beheading innocent people, institutionally sentencing people to death merely for bad-mouthing their religion, and to threaten to kill or to actually kill authors, cartoonists or playwrights merely for exercising their free speech. Indeed, what's more amazing is that the West was so accommodating for so long, so ready to indulge in this indolent appeasement of a religion that is essentially in a class of its own, in its ability to field adherents that will engage in this sort of behavior. Yes, I think that will be Bin Laden's legacy. The man who decisively kicked the West in its complacency. And finally, got the response that he had been lusting for. 